Hello all and welcome to Illuminating Pathways, the Pathway Builder launch. We are so very pleased to have all of you with us today. Uh, I am Jeannie Kitchens, Chief Technology Services Officer with Credential Engine, and along with me are Cadence Colexto, our Accounts and Publishing Data Analysts, Sneha Adula, Solutions Architect, Deborah Everhart, Chief Strategy Officer, and I also want to recognize um, other Credential Engine team members that have joined us today and will be helping out in the chat, I'm sure, and to um, Pathway Pilot participants who helped us get ready for this launch today. Uh, Credential Engine is a nonprofit with a mission to map the credential landscape in order to empower people to find the pathways that are best for them. And we accomplish our vision and our mission through strategy, through programs, through deep and lasting partnerships and collaborations, and also through infrastructure. And so today we're gonna to be taking a look at some of this infrastructure, um, specifically the Pathway Builder. Today's webinar is going to cover Illuminating Pathways, um, an introduction to the Pathway Builder, and we're going to build a pathway. We are going to focus on demonstrating the Pathway Builder so you can start using it um, following this webinar. We'll close with Q&A. Now, I do want to encourage everyone to use the chat throughout the webinar. If you, if you have a question, um, after hearing anything that we're presenting, please feel free to go ahead and put that in the chat, and then we'll do our best to allocate time at the end of the webinar to maybe answer some additional questions. At Credential Engine, we use technology to map the credential landscape. Foundational to our work is the Credential Transparency Description Language, or CTDL. And when we're talking about the Pathway Builder, we're very specifically going to be talking about pathway terms in with the CTDL. Um, we also maintain an entire suite of CTDL publishing tools. And now among those tools is the Pathway Builder. We um, manage and maintain the credential registry for collecting CTDL linked data structure. As of today, you can publish pathways as CTDL through the Pathway Builder to the credential registry, and then the data in the registry becomes available for other consuming tools to utilize, such as maybe guidance tools or um, that help people along their journey or a pathway. <clears throat> the credential transparency description language, as I said, is foundational to our work at Credential Engine and certainly to the Pathway Builder that you're going to see today. Um, what you're seeing here provides you a good example of the many CTDL classes available for describing the depth and breadth of the credentialing landscape. And those arrows allude to all of the interconnectivity that the CTDL can describe. And now I'm going to turn it over to Deb Everhart to talk about illuminating pathways. Hey, everyone. Thank you for your time. I'm Deb Everhart, Chief Strategy Officer at Credential Engine. And I am going to start by letting our short two minute video convey our message. Many people find themselves looking for pathways to a new, fulfilling career at some point in their lives, but they don't know where to start. What information they can find is usually too broad and doesn't provide actionable steps realistic for their levels of education and experience. This often leaves people feeling left out and disempowered. How do we show options that are both practical and workable? Pathways with clear underlying data are critical for making connections especially because pathways bridge across different education and training providers and jobs. Credentials and skills in pathways become exponentially more meaningful and useful in the context of other credentials and related information. Then all stakeholders, learners, workers, educators, policymakers, and employers can understand the opportunities the pathways unlock. 
Credential Engine's Pathway Builder utilizes CTDL and the Credential Registry to enable the description of navigable and equitable career pathways for learners, workers, and employers. The CTDL and Credential Registry provide the common language and the data to make pathways real and actionable. This means a person can explore pathways to new careers and have a clear understanding of where to start, what steps to take, and how to progress to reach specific career goals. Not only can pathways guide someone to a new career, they can also map out possible directions within a field, introducing new positions and advancement opportunities. Transparency about the components in pathways, credentials, skills, jobs, and more empowers people to get to their desired destinations more easily, efficiently, and equitably. Publishing pathways and their components to the credential registry provides linked, open data for representing starting points, destinations, alignments to occupational and industry frameworks, and optional routes within and across careers. Credential Engine is here to help build, support, and connect to pathways in CTDL. Learn more at credentialengine.org slash pathway builder. So at Credential Engine, we developed the Pathway Builder to address this need for clear, transparent information that can connect credentials, skills, and jobs. Um, we all know that the number and types of credentials and credential providers is growing faster than anyone's ability to make sense of them. And we're no longer living in a world where a single credential prepares one for a lifetime career. Um, it's the next slide. So Credential Engine's research has identified over a million credentials offered in the US. Many of you have seen this research. That's a really big number. And that diversity of credentials isn't actually a bad thing because what it does is it reflects our rapidly evolving economies. But our learn and work ecosystems are really complex. They're made even more complex by the individual because people are increasingly mobile. They need to apply their skills and careers that are different from where they started. So how can anyone understand how to navigate among that many diverse credentials? And how do people understand the relevance of their skills? And how can they match credentials and skills to job opportunities? So our technologies, as well as a lot of other technologies that are evolving in the market now, can help provide better transparency for navigating to opportunities. Credential skills and jobs can be more transparent and valuable. They use linked open data in CTDL to describe their many different characteristics, connections, and context, and importantly, that includes connected data for defining pathways. Unfortunately, most of our systems and processes in these learn and work ecosystems are siloed, they're disconnected. So across schools, colleges, jobs, military, on-the-job training, lots of other sources of information, these credential skills and jobs, they use different data structures and they're opaque. They don't show people how to get to opportunities. And this isn't just inconvenient, it's unfair and it's inequitable because it creates barriers to advancement and it systematically includes people who don't know how to navigate these disconnected processes. And it impedes economic advancement, um, both for individuals and for communities. So everyone deserves clear, transparent information that empowers them to make the best decisions because each person's pathway is unique and dynamic and we're all going to move through lots of different cycles of learning, working, advancing. Um, but each person can understand their own individual pathway options better if they can refer to pathways that are defined using the credential transparency description language. So providers can clearly define pathways, illuminate opportunities, help people see options, options that they might not have known about or they might not have understood without a pathway that they could refer to so that they could figure out which credentials are valuable um, so that when they achieve skills, those skills can have relevance and then they can match their achievements with good jobs that provide real career opportunities. So clear defined pathways in CTDL are beneficial for everyone. Um, for example, the individuals can see many different things about a pathway, including on ramps to pathways that could lead to advance to advancement. Um, it can help education and training providers describe how their credentials lead to jobs. 
It can help employers clarify how to get to good jobs in their own organizations, and from there, how to grow into even better jobs in their organizations. So at Credential Engine, transparent CTDL data for clear pathways, this is, this is central to our mission and vision. I mean, you see it right there. Our mission is to map the credential landscape with clear and consistent information, fueling the creation of resources that empower people to find the pathways that are best for them. And we do that in order to really actually make real a future where millions of people worldwide have access to information about credentials that opens their eyes to the full range of opportunities for learning, advancement, and meaningful careers. And so that's why we developed Pathway Builder. Um, it's so that data in the credential registry can more easily be used to define and communicate learning and career pathways. So this tool enables publishing existing pathways or creating new pathways using linked open data in CTDL to make these valuable connections between credential skills and jobs. I mean, there are already thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, who knows exactly, uh, pathways that are already out there that have been defined by lots of different types of providers, but they're trapped. They're in diagrams, PDFs, posters, and they're not based on actionable data. The Pathway Builder supports taking pathway information that's in lots of different sizes and shapes and formats and expressing these pathways as transparent human and machine readable data. And then that provides actionable routes that help people understand how to get to a destination. So pathways in CTDL can connect data from a lot of different sources. So it can be within an in organization and beyond an organization. Um, for example, like a community college's pathway can include courses from the college and certifications from industry bodies and jobs from local employers. Uh, a transfer pathway could include, for example, courses, credits, assessments from a lot of different sources in order to recognize a person's learning and advance progress toward the credential attainment. An employer's job advancement pathway, for example, it could include internal training for internal skills and third party training for nationally recognized skill sets that are required to get to higher paying jobs. So there are many, many opportunities for translating existing real world pathways into actionable interoperable data, as well as opportunities for creating new pathways using CTDL. And super important, this value is not restricted to building pathways within the credential registry interface. The Pathway Builder is available as open source code. And we genuinely want tech providers to incorporate these valuable capabilities into their own product and service solutions. Because our goal is to empower people. We want everyone to publish quality CTDL data. That data is foundational to creating pathways. And then everyone can link components of learning and career pathways into these beneficial human machine readable data and that can power systems and applications well beyond the registry. So using CTDL and registry data to build pathways illuminates pathways forward for everyone involved in these ecosystems. And with a better understanding of the clearly defined pathways, People are also empowered to envision and act on their own dynamic, personalized pathways. So that's the big picture. We've got a lot of resources to help you learn more and to build your own pathways using CTDL. Thanks. Thank you, Deb. That was great. <clears throat> um, now, let me uh, talk a little bit more to introduce everyone to the Pathway Builder. Um, we are going to spend the bulk of our time doing a demonstration of it. Um, but let's just do a recap of some of the key features of the Pathway Builder. You use the Pathway Builder to pull data from the credential registry. Um, it is an interactive drag and drop tool, and you'll see that in the demonstration. You can build very simple to very complex pathways with the Pathway Builder and combine data from multiple resources. You can then publish your pathways to the credential registry. 
Who is the pathway builder for? Well, the users are going to include professionals with organizations that are designing or using existing learning and career pathways to help people achieve their goals. So uh, whether you're with an education and training or other type of credentialing organization, an employer, um, <clears throat> a professional association, or other types of organizations that are designing or housing created pathways, you can utilize the pathway builder to, uh, as, as Deb showed with those different kinds of pathways that may be posters or images or in spreadsheets and so forth, to turn that into CTDL pathways that are linked data and therefore transparent. And to prepare for building your pathways, there's a few things that you will want to do. So before you begin building your pathway, you'll want to um, get ready in order to effectively build and design them. Um, if you have a pre-designed pathway or framework, um, <clears throat> that is great. Or if you're going to design a new pathway, well, you'll want to at least have an idea of that, a framework for that. You'll need to do a little bit of analysis and planning. Um, pathways can be very simple, but they can also be very complex, requiring a little thought to go into building your pathway. You'll want to think about what are the pathway components, what are the resources that you need to build your pathway, and what might need to be published to the credential registry to help you build your pathway. And <clears throat> as I said, um, the, the um, pathway builder is going to utilize data in the credential registry, so you want to publish your pathway resources. You'll also want to determine if a progression model is needed. And we're not going to get too much into progression models today, but we have many materials available um, to you to learn more about progression models. So thinking about your planning and analysis to prepare for building a pathway um, will help you be equipped for successfully and effectively building your pathway in the Pathway Builder. So let's take a look at building a pathway. Now, when you're going to build your pathways, what you're going to do is start off by logging into the credential registry publishing system. The Pathway Builder is directly integrated with that system. And as Deb had mentioned, it's also available as open source code from GitHub. So if you are a um, software creator, you can utilize that code as well. But today we're going to be focused on logging into our publishing system and utilizing the Pathway Builder there. <clears throat> um, when you're, when we're, we're going to take a look at with a demonstration, we're going to see how we can search the registry and pull resources in to build our pathways. And it's really important to know that pathway components serve as proxies for resources in the credential registry. And it's that data in the credential registry that provides rich and actionable information for both humans and machines. And we could see that there's a number of different types of data or resources that we can publish to the registry, including assessments, competencies, courses, credentials, jobs and occupations, progression models, support services, and more. Now we have developed an entire suite of guidance for the Pathway Builder. It is available now from our website for anyone to utilize. So we have, along with the guidance, we have um, Google Slides and YouTube videos on all of these topics that you see here on the slide. And all of this is also going to be locatable through the Pathway Builder as well. And we'll take a look at that with a demonstration. Now, we're going to do a demonstration today that's not going to delve into every single detail of building a pathway that, these, that this guidance covers. Um, we're going to cover the, um, the high-level pieces of information that you need to know to begin building your pathway. Now, among that high-level information are CTDL pathway terms. The Pathway Builder literally uses the credential transparency description language. So as we are going through this demonstration with the Pathway Builder, we're going to be talking about the, actually building the pathway, which is a CTDL term. We're going to be looking at pathway components. We're going to bring in a component condition, a constraint, and we're going to look at resources published to the credential registry. 
And while we're doing the demonstration, I'm going to be pointing out some terminology. It simply helps um, with this tool um, to be able to use kind of a common language to talk about the pathway builder and the components of the pathway builder. So what you're seeing here is a list of the terminology that we'll be using as we do the demonstration. With our demonstration, we're also going to take a look at what we call levels of expression. We can build a simple pathway that only uses what we call connectors, but we can also build more complex pathways um, or a level two and level three that bring in the conditions for completing a pathway and more complex constraints. And we'll take a look at an example with our demonstration. So let's do it. Let's take a look at the pathway builder. So um, let's let Sneha go ahead and grab the screen share. So we're going to begin with having already logged into the credential registry publishing system. So what you're seeing here is we've logged in and now Sneha is going to go to the main menu and under tools, she's going to select the pathway builder. Once we have selected the pathway builder, you're going to select the organization that you're affiliated with. For this demonstration purpose, we're going to log in as credential engine and use our sandbox environment. And we're going to go ahead and, and go to the next modal window that will automatically be presented to you. Everything you're seeing in this is for describing your pathway using the CTDL. And rather than watch us type and fill this in, we're going to switch to a pathway that we started we're gonna work on it some more, and we're gonna begin by opening up that same exact modal window and taking a look at its contents. <clears throat> so let's take a look here. What we're seeing is the name of the pathway, a description of it, and you can see that those have a red asterisk and that means they're required. So that's the minimum information you're gonna to need to describe your pathway. But we're always gonna encourage you to add more additional context that's really important when building your pathway. So as we go on down, we can see that we can include additional information there, including um, the industry, type. And if we were to begin to type in a what's called a NAICS code in the United States, we would automatically um, start to find those. And you can simply click on a code to add it. But you can also type in free text. So you would simply type it in and enter the relevant industries. You could also enter keywords. And um, you'll see that very similarly, um, you can simply begin to type in and then enter to add information. And with occupations, you can start to type in ONET codes or standard occupation codes. It will automatically begin to find those and fill them in. Or you can free type occupations and include occupations, you know, codes from other countries, for example. <clears throat> um, below that, we can add instructional program information. And in the United States, we can go ahead and begin typing in classification of instructional program codes. It's automatically going to find them. We can select them and we could add them or we can free type into that box as well. We could add subjects as well. And you'll notice the question marks there. Anytime you see a question mark in the tool, you can click on that question mark and you will get more information. Um, below subjects, we could also add support services. Now support services are, are published to the credential registry before you build your pathway. And we have published a nursing occupation support service. And Sneha just began typing that in. It automatically searched the registry, pulled that up, and now she's added it. We're, as I mentioned, we're not going to work on a progression model today. We'll save that for a future webinar that's more advanced. And now we can go ahead and save our pathway information. So now we're seeing the pathway builder. And let's take a little tour of the board here. At the very top of the board, we have a header. And you can see the name of the pathway that Sneha just created. And we can always get back and edit that just below the name as an edit. And that will open up that modal window there and we can make any um, changes that we want to that um, description. 
To the right in the header, we can save, we can exit. We see um, this little placeholder that's kind of grayed out because we don't have any conflicts, but that's where conflicts will show. We can approve our pathway to publish it to the registry. We can change some settings on our pathway. When we're done creating our pathway, we can share it with others. And adjacent to that is a question mark. And this is where you will always find help. So it's how we'll click that, open up that modal window, and you're gonna see the table of contents and you can navigate to any of those areas. You could watch the YouTube playlist, go to, to Google Slides. Everything is available under a Creative Commons license for you to use and incorporate with any materials you have as well. So that's the help, it's always available there. And those documents are also available from the Credential Engine website. Um, so now that we've looked at the header, let's take a look at the pathway progression just below the header. Just below the header, we see the word pathway and we see destination component. Um, the destination component is always going to be to the far right of the board. And that's where we're always going to drop what we call a card onto the board. Um, and there's always going to be one final destination component in your pathway. And we're going to talk more about that in just a moment. <clears throat> Below the progression is the board. And the board is where you're going to drag and drop your cards. And those are going to be data or um, resources from the registry and components that are from a component library that you can fill in. And you can see that we have dropped some cards onto the board already. And the thing to know about once you drop your cards onto the board is they're movable. We can move those cards around. When you drop a card, it's it, um, you're gonna have the ability to rearrange them to set up your pathway. Um, and then to the left side of the board, we have what we call the left rail. And in the left rail at the very top, you can see that there is a search registry resources. Now let's go ahead and open that up. Let's take a look. So when you go to create your own pathway, um, the, the modal window to describe your pathway is automatically gonna appear. You're gonna fill that in. And then this is gonna automatically open up following it. So what you can do is search the registry for anything your organization has published and what others have published as well. You can mix and match resources and include um, registry information published by others. We're gonna go ahead and do a search for some resources that we need to build the pathway. So Sneha is gonna to select to look for things published by my organization. And notice at the top, there's a drop down with filters. It's completely optional. You don't have to use those filters, but we're gonna go ahead and search for a credential. And we're going to look for the certified nurse assistant micro pathway micro credential. And Sneha is going to click the plus and it's going to add it. And then we're going to do add a uh, course for medical terminology. She's going to click the plus and it's adding it to the right. And then we're going to click, we're going to select a competency. And Sneha is going to select <clears throat> applies medical terminology on the job. And you could see that it's populated this queue on the right hand side. Now we could have picked a lot more cards, but for the sake of time, we're picking three. And we can click done adding. And that search is always there. So you could always return to it and add more resources. Now you see on that left rail under um, selected resources, all of the cards that Sneha selected from the registry are there for you. And if she were to select more, they would simply drop there. And notice they're pre populated. They came with all the data behind it that's already published to the credential registry. So now let's um, take a look at <clears throat> um, the tab adjacent to selected. It says components. Go ahead and click that, Sneha. Here we have what we call the component library. These are all the type of CTDL components that you can build your pathway with. Now you'll notice they're at alphabetical order, except for one card at the very bottom, that orange card called condition. You'll see that they all have unique icons. They have nice uh, color coding. So we know exactly what they are. 
they all have a question mark and we can click that question mark and see that what the definition is. Um, in this case, it's an, an assessment. We can see what an assessment is and the, all the cards will work the same there. Um, and the other <clears throat> card that um, is, is a different color is a credential. And you'll notice that those color codings are always gonna stay the same. Even after you drag your card on the board, you see we already have some cards on the board there. And now we know how they got there, right? We searched the registry and we used our component library and then we dragged and dropped cards on the board. So let's take a little look at the cards that we've already put on the board before we add some more to them to show you how to build a pathway. So <clears throat> um, as I mentioned on the very far right, we have a destination. When you're building a CTDL pathway, you're going to have uh, a single destination for a given pathway, and you're going to be prompted to drop one card there. In this particular case, it's a credential for a license, an occupational license. It could have been a job. It is whatever component makes the most sense for your pathway. And now let's take a look at the other cards on the board there. <clears throat> you can see that we have an assessment um, just to the left of that destination. And um, <clears throat> over to the left of that assessment, we have two courses and we have work experience. And <clears throat> I know which cards came from the registry because the names on those cards are hyperlinked. And if I were to follow those links, they're gonna go to that um, detail page in the uh, credential finder. <clears throat> yep. And <clears throat> I wanna point out that arrow, what we call a connector. So when you're building a pathway, we're going to be connecting the cards left to right toward the destination. Your arrows are always going to be leading and going in the direction of a destination. Mm -hmm. And we can see that arrow there. Um, <clears throat> um, and uh, when we drop cards on the board, we can move them around and we can remove arrows and change the arrows as well. We'll do that in a moment though. Now we're gonna go ahead and um, we are going to um, build a little mini pathway here. <clears throat> and we're gonna do the three levels of expression. We're gonna start off by only using connectors because conditions, that orange card that's available under components is optional. You don't have to include conditions, but conditions can add very important information. So we'll look at an example of that. And the third level expression will be adding what we call a constraint. And that's part of a condition and we're gonna show you that as well. And um, see so how, let's just show real quick on the settings. Under settings, we can turn a grid on and off. So if we want to see the layout of the cards there, we'll get this nice little grid around it. If you've ever worked on diagrams, you've seen similar um, treatment here. Um, so you could turn that grid on if it's helpful to you, but we'll just go ahead and turn it off. Now let's go ahead and um, grab some resources. So we had done that search of the registry and we're going to drag the course medical terminology over. And we are going to drag the credential over and see how it's gonna drop that to the right of the course there. And you can see we're moving the, she just moved the card, the cards are movable. So when you drop a card, you can change the position of it. <clears throat> and what we're gonna recommend is as you build your pathway, you lay out your cards before using your connectors. And then we're gonna drop the competency below the course. All right, drag and drop. So <clears throat> now those were the resources that we brought um, from the, re the um, registry. They're already pre-filled in. Let's go ahead and drag some selected components onto the board. So we're gonna pick a co-curricular <clears throat> component. Now notice the red outline. This means it's empty and we need to put information in it. Now, each one of those cards you've noticed in the top right corner have three little dots. And that is where we can open a card to view it or edit it. Now the cards, go ahead. The cards that <clears throat> we dragged in from the registry are already pre-filled but let's go ahead and edit this card here, Sneha. Yeah, let's go ahead and edit it. <clears throat> now, when you edit a card or you view a card, it's always gonna open up here on what we call the right rail. Consistently, always your cards are gonna show there. 
If it's pre-filled in, all the information that came with your card will be there. If not, you're gonna to need to fill it in. So red asterisk means required. You see a component, this particular component has a very minimal requirement. We're always going to suggest adding more information. So you can see Sneha is filling in information in that card. And when she's done, she's going to save that component. <clears throat> and her red outline is gone. We're good to go with that component. <clears throat> so now we can um, take a look at, um, uh, let's see, let's drag an assessment component onto the board. Now, this is something really cool about this tool is here I have an empty component. It's in red. Remember, this is your component library. It's a never ending supply of pathway components that you can use. And Sneha is going to hit edit on that component. And there's three types of components that currently you can, if you do not have them already published to the registry, you can do double duty. We, with the assessment, course, and credential components, there's a toggle, and you're going to go ahead, Sneha, and toggle that um, to create a registry resource. Now, I had mentioned that a pathway component is a proxy for the resource in the registry. So if you have not published your course yet, what you can do is do double duty here. So Sneha is going to go ahead and add the minimum required data for the credential registry to create that assessment, and it's going to automatically publish it to the registry immediately upon completing the information that she's entering there. Now we're seeing those red asterisks, so we know exactly what's required. And in the case of a resource for the registry, it's going to be the minimum data policy. And Sneha is going to continue to fill it in. You could watch her filling it in while I'm talking here. Once you publish this to the registry, then what's going to happen is this becomes available to you in our publishing system. So if you want to add more data to it, you're welcome to do that. You have full access to the publishing system. But what this does is make it immediately available in the registry for you to add it to your pathway. And we can see that it's saving and it has published. And now it's automatically created the component. So let's save the component. Now that was awesome. <laughs> I love that. So now we have laid out our components or cards on the board. And um, you know what? We should save it. We should save our work. Now I want to mention that it will save automatically approximately every five minutes. And it will notify you that it's saving. But if you're like me and you're working hard on something, you want to make sure it's safe. So the next thing we want to do is we want to think about adding our connectors. Now, <clears throat> Sneha is going to start adding them. And the way she's going to add them is she's always going to be clicking left to right, connecting what we call a parent card to other cards that will be to the right. So we're progressing to our destination. And she's gonna click the orange dot. So she's gonna start on a card to the left to the card she wants to connect. She's simply gonna click that other card and it's gonna put those nice little connectors in there. <clears throat> and you can see that, see how just keep on, keep adding your, your connectors there that we can begin to build our pathway. Now, what we're seeing here, as Sneha continues to build, is um, a pathway where, you know, the, the person is going to be completing, uh, you know, these courses, the earning the competency, taking an assessment, earning a micro-credential, but then they're also going to progress through this other set of courses, work experience, another assessment, and then earning that, getting to that destination component. So now we have built a simple level one pathway. We could um, save this pathway. We could um, go ahead and publish it, publish it as it is. But you know what? We want to show how to add a condition, right, Sneha? So let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, we're going to need to remove some arrows. So we'll show you how to do that. To remove an arrow, you can see that what happens is Snehan clicked the icon on the arrow. It displayed exactly what that arrow points to. It is possible that an arrow can point to more than one thing. Um, and you would click the X adjacent to the connection that you want to remove, and the arrow is gone. And <clears throat> we can move all those arrows out of the way. <clears throat> 
And then what we're going to do is add a condition in there. And see how it's going to drag and drop that condition in there. And we're going to go ahead and add a condition. So we're going to click it. We're going to edit it. <clears throat> it's going to open up that modal window on the right-hand side. We already know that those red asterisks mean it is required. And we see we have to have a name. And we see this thing called target <clears throat> components. And that's going to be a quantity. We're always going to recommend um, putting a um, description in there so people have better context of what your um, condition is. And in this particular case, um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to say that the requirement is that the person has to complete the course. They have to um, complete the co-curricular activity and they have to demonstrate the competency and thereby the required number is gonna be three. And that required number is referring to the three cards to the left of that condition there. So <clears throat> what Sneha is gonna do is make connections now after, well, after saving this um, to, that, to that card. And now we have a condition. Now we could have said only one of those things are required. It could be that maybe you can have a choice of taking the course or doing the work, um, the co-curricular, or just demonstrating the competency. So <clears throat> that is a very basic essential information about a condition. But let's open that condition back up because now we can go to the third level of expression. And that's adding what we call constraints. <clears throat> and a constraint is entirely optional, um, but you'll see that you're always going to be adding constraints to a condition. So you have to have a condition to add those constraints. And grammatically, you're going to think of them as a sentence, um, a grammatical sentence. In this particular case, we're going to say that a um, grade of equal to, uh, equal to or greater than passing is required. And so Sneha put the left sword in, source in, excuse me, as grade. And then you notice she had this drop down for what's called comparator in the CTDL. <clears throat> and there's question marks there as well. So if you click the question mark, you can get more information. But the comparator is a defined list. And it's something that all of us learned in elementary school. Let's go ahead and click on that. It means equal to, greater than, greater than, or equal to, and so forth. So you're always going to be selecting from this defined list. So we're going to say you have to have a greater than or equal to passing. And we could add another constraint. So we could add as many constraints as we want. We could have zero constraints or we could have, you know, 10 constraints. In this case, we're just going to add one more. And we're going to say the other constraint is um, the co the um, co-curricular activity, which was the nursing expo, um, equal to confirmed participation. So there, the person would have had to have done something, right, to have confirmed some level, certain level of participation um, with that um, nursing expo. And as Sneha is saving those constraints, then um, we're seeing them there and we're seeing them as a grammatically understandable, readable left to right um, constraint. So now we have added <clears throat> all the levels of, um, of expression, and we can go ahead and save that um, condition. Now, <clears throat> um, we can go ahead and um, save this. Um, and But before we approve it um, to be published to the registry, there's something I want to, want to show you, and that's the conflicts. So um, we're going to remove an arrow intentionally, and <clears throat> we're going to try to um, save it and <clears throat> approve it. And when we do, um, it's going to ask us, are we sure we want to? We're going to say, yes, we're sure we want to. But what we're going to see is that we're going to get an error message there. <clears throat> and the error message is telling us that um, this specific um, work experience card here needs to be connected. So when you're building your pathway, you can see not every single card has to be connected on the left-hand side of it, but there always has to be a connection from a card um, to toward the destination. So let's re-add that arrow. And let's save it. <clears throat> 
and let's approve it. Yeah, we are sure. And <clears throat> so once we approve it, um, the pathway is published to, we get a success message, that's always important. Um, now we can take a look at what that looks like in the credential finder. Now from this board via that share link, um, we can use that share link to share our pathway. It'll copy that URL um, to your clipboard. Um, <clears throat> and with our, our video series and um, instruction series, as I said, there's far more details and there's other ways that you can share your pathway as well. But here we are. Um, this is the pathway that we just built. We just published it to the registry. We can see a listing of all the components there, but we could also view the pathway. So let's take a look at um, open in the pathway viewer. And here's the pathway we built. You can see that um, with this view here, the user cannot change your pathway. They can't edit anything, but it looks just like the pathway that you built. You can select the view pathway details and it's gonna show <clears throat> those details. Um, it's gonna show everything that you saw that we had added including a link to those support services. And all of the cards that have a URL are linkable, and that would be linking to the credential finder detail about that card, that resource that came from the registry. And of course, behind this, this pathway is published to the registry as CTDL link data structure. So let's see. That is what we wanted to cover for the demo, right, Sia? I think we covered everything. We built our mini pathway. Yep. Um, so let's jump back. Well, let's hold there. Let me see um, what's going on in the chat. Um, I'm betting there has been comments and questions in the chat and people have been answering questions, but if someone could help me out by letting me know um, yeah. yeah, I think so. I've been I've been typing in responses to um, almost all of the questions in the chat, but it may be that if someone has asked a question that I have not yet addressed, they could speak up. Or if someone wants to comment on their question or elaborate on um more information beyond what I've typed in the chat. That's fantastic. Thanks so much for doing that, Deb. And if you want to verbalize, please raise your hand just again since it's recorded and we're not talking over each other. If anybody would like to raise your hand and then I believe Cadence can make sure you're unmuted. Uh, make sure your questions are getting answered. Now, while we're waiting, um, what I also want to mention is, you know, this is a launch of the tool. Um, based on work with a pilot that I mentioned at the very beginning when I thanked our pilot participants. We will be doing additional work. Um, there's additional functionality that we know will be very valuable, um, and we will be making that additional functionality available over the coming um, months and keeping everybody apprised of that and um, making opportunities available for additional webinars to do deeper dives. And I see Cindy um, Hill has a hand raised. Cadence, could you take a look and watch that? See who has raised her hand. Make sure we can unmute if they've raised their hand so they can ask a question or make a comment. Thank you. Jeannie. You just knew I was going to raise my hand, didn't you? I'm glad to see you again. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> I'm very excited about this because I've wanted to do it. I mean, all my work has been trying to stack. So we have the four levels of our credential. Mm -hmm. So would I list, you know, because we have bronze, silver, gold right mm -hmm. so would i list under my destination component the bronze which would then lead to the silver which would each oh. one of those be a destination yeah that's a really good question and that's a really great um segue to maybe a deeper dive because you're really getting into an interesting topic and maybe even progression models um <clears throat> and that's where maybe you could build a pathway where you're explicitly identifying the progression through those those types of levels, you know, bronze, silver, so forth. Uh, or maybe you're building individual pathways for each one and then uh, connecting them. And working, we are working now on um, how you will connect multiple pathways together. Okay, so, that was yeah. my other thing, was I've shown how it maps to 
<clears throat> each one of the MSSC credentials. And I know oh, their wonderful. credentials are in there. And then the okay. NIMS, and I'm working on CompTIA A+. So it's like oh, showing how ours maps to these different, but like silver might map to this one, but gold might map to this one. So, I mean, it's mm -hmm. getting really complex really quickly, but I did want <laughs> Can I yeah. map to other, can I map to their credentials? So um, well, what you can be doing with the Pathway Builder tool is if there is, if what you're doing is building a pathway that incorporates that kind of data and they've published to the registry, you can bring in those resources. And I also just want to bring back up my noting about analysis and planning. There is some analysis and planning. And if anyone has questions, you're, if you're ready to build a pathway like you are, Cindy, um, after this webinar, you can get in touch with me and I'm happy to delve further into it because it's going to be so specific from pathway to pathway. No mm -hmm. two are really alike unless you're using a standard model, right, in your organization. All right. Thank Please. you. We're so glad you joined and I'm looking forward to um, further talking with you about it. Any other hands raised, Cadence? Not that I'm seeing. Great, great. Um, super. Let's see. Let's jump back to the deck then. And um, sure, so so of course, um, as part of the closing, I, I want to mention again, obviously, this is recorded. You know, we have a lot of resources that we have created for you to review. They're all available on this fantastic web page that Devin Peelman of our team um, created, and it's all available to you now, all those resources. Everything that I showed you in Sneha showed you um, with the Pathway Builder is available now. Um, so your first step is going to be to set up an account. And as I said, um, you know, if you have questions, you can reach out to us. We're more than happy to, to um, answer your questions, more than happy to um, work with you as we launch this Pathway Builder. So we can also learn, continue to learn from you. Super important. And let's just go ahead and go to the next slide if everything's good to go. As I said, you can go ahead and begin your building your pathways now. Pathway Builder is available. Um, and um, everything you need to set up your account if you don't already have one. And by the way, there's no fees, no, there's no charges or anything like that for setting up your credential engine account and using the Pathway Builder. So you can go ahead and begin building your pathway. Um, you can contact uh, Deb and I with any um, questions that you um, may have about the Pathway Builder. And you could also email our publishing at Credential Engine. We monitor that email every day. Um, it's monitored by multiple people. And um, so I do also suggest using that email address and questions can get routed to the right person in a timely manner as well. Jeannie, I just wanted to double down on something you just said, which is um, these are all freely available capabilities and the open source code is truly open. Mm -hmm. And it's our mission to have people use these capabilities and also for providers, including commercial providers to help us build pathways that empower people. So please come on in and uh, let's get this ball rolling. <laughs> yeah, build pathways. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that, Deb. Really appreciate it. And thank you again to everyone for joining. We truly appreciate all of you. And uh, thank you for being part of this, um, this event. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, then I think we'll go ahead and conclude. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.